On July 19th, the Seattle Mariners lost a game at home to the Minnesota Twins to put them at 47 and 48 overall on the season, five and a half games back from a wild card spot and 10 games back in the division. The next day, it was announced that Jared Kelnick had broken his foot after kicking a cooler after that strikeout the night before. Things seemed to be trending downward for the Mariners. Their season had just been mediocre. Some frustrated fans even saw this Kelnick injury as being a potential nail in the coffin for their season. This obviously is a massive blow to, to the Mariners and uh, is likely the nail in the coffin for their season, to be honest. All right, that was me. I was the frustrated fan. And I could not have been more wrong because the Mariners have been on a tear the past month. From July 19th to August 27th, the Mariners have increased their chances of making the playoffs from 13% to 84%. And their chances of winning the division have gone up from 2.5% to 40%. In current day, after a sweep of the Royals along with some help from the Rangers, the Seattle Mariners sit atop the AL West this late in the season for the first time since 2003. That's right, current day the Mariners are first in the AL West. So let's take a look at how they turn things around. But before we do, if you're a fan of this type of content, make sure to like and subscribe to the YouTube channel, as well as finding me across social media platforms at the Couch GM. So to start, what was working and what wasn't working for the Mariners up to July 19th? What was working was their pitching staff. For a majority of the season up to that point, the Mariners had one of, if not the best, pitching staffs in all of baseball. Through mid-May, they had a sizable lead above the next pitching staff in baseball as far as wins above replacement. At this point, they were 29% above the Twins. And they were the second fastest pitching staff in MLB history to reach 8 wins above replacement per fan graphs, only behind the 2013 Tigers. Led by Luis Castillo, Logan Gilbert, George Kirby, rookie Bryce Miller, and then later in the season, Brian Wu, the Mariners starting pitching was and is arguably the top rotation in baseball. And this is after they lost Robbie Ray for the season in his first outing, as well as losing Marco Gonzalez. On top of their filthy bullpen in Andres Munoz, Matt Brash, Justin Topa, Gabe Spire, Taylor Saucedo, and others, after having traded Paul Sewald at the deadline, Current day, the Mariners have the second most valuable pitching staff in all of baseball, with their starting pitching being second only to the Phillies, and their bullpen being second only to the Orioles. Part of which has to be credited to Pete Woodworth, who is named Baseball America's Coach of the Year for 2022, and has been the Mariners pitching coach since the 2019 offseason. And what's pretty incredible is just how good the Phillies and the Mariners pitching staffs have been, as after the Mariners, the next best team is the Braves, who are 22% below the production of the Mariners so far. And the Mariners have three guys in Luis Castillo, George Kirby, and Logan Gilbert in top five and whip, and Bryce Miller would be fourth overall if he qualified in innings. The Mariners' 401 runs allowed up to July 19th was 7th in baseball, and really the only reason they had a plus run differential. Their pitching was their counterbalance to their dreadful offense, which was keeping them level right at 500. At the 100 game mark, they were 50 and 50, the definition of average. And when I say average, I mean right at 500 the entire year. They hit the 500 mark 22 times through the first 100 games. And while their record as a whole was hovering right at 500, their offense as a whole was below average. The Mariners have been one of the top five teams in total strikeouts throughout the year. And up till around July, they were about 23rd in OPS, on base plus slugging. So they weren't getting on base all that often. And when they were getting their hits, they weren't doing much damage, leading to low offensive production. But since about the start of July, there was a switch that was flipped. And since game 100, they've gone 24 and 6. And those 6 losses have been by a total of 8 runs. Meaning that even though they lost 6 games, they've been in each and every one of those games. And they're just a few hits away from having a perfect month. And in the 50 games since July 1st, Mariners hitters lead the American League with an 818 OPS, while Mariners pitchers lead the AL with a 3.24 ERA during that span. And turns out that over the 50 games since July 1st, the Mariners have posted their best 50 game stretch of play on both sides of the ball since the final 50 games of the 2001 season. This stretch they're currently on is truly historic. And this streak is led by none other than Julio Rodriguez, who is currently the hottest player in baseball. 
In 23 games in August, he's now batting 417 with 10 doubles, 7 home runs, 29 RBIs, 11 stolen bases, and a 1.183 OPS after his fourth inning home run tonight. He also tonight extended his career best 13 game hitting streak, and this home run tonight marks his third game in a row with a home run, the first time he's done that in his career. Those August numbers include his record-setting hot streak from just a week and a half ago, in which he was declared the hottest hitter ever over a four-game stretch. He logged 17 hits in four games, the most hits ever by a player over a four-game span. He was the first player in MLB history to log four hits in four straight games, had the most hits in a four-game span with five-plus stolen bases, recorded a hit in nine straight at-bats, and over a four-game stretch, he recorded 1.1 Fangraph wins above replacement, whereas Jonathan India has recorded 1.1 wins above replacement the entire season. Although part of this is, of course, because Julio has been an elite defender and Jonathan India has had a down year. I think it's safe to say that Hot Julio summer just might turn into Hot Julio fall. And after having a slow start to the year, what changed for Julio? Uh, just kind of uh, getting into a position to attack more consistently and like more simple, you know. Uh, thankfully, God bless me with some talent and I feel like the easier that I, that I do things, the better results that I get. So I feel like that's, that's kind of what, I, what I'm working more, like stay simple and consistent in my movements to, uh, to get into a good position to hit. So Julio did make some swing changes that seem to be paying off. You can see his back elbow, instead of being tucked in, it's now at more of a 90 degree angle, as well as his front knee seems to be a bit more loaded. And as he mentioned, less overall movement in the swing. And while I'm making this video, Julio is now four for five in the game tonight against the Oakland Athletics. He now leads the American League in hits on the year. So all those numbers I mentioned earlier, you can just boost him up a little bit. And after tonight's four hit game per Sarah Langs, Julio's five four hit plus games are the most by a player in a 10 game span since 1900. And Julio became just the second player in Mariners history with 40 plus hits and 10 plus stolen bases in a calendar month. He joins, of course, Ichiro, who did this four times. And apparently tonight, when asked about having 28 hits in his last 10 games, Julio said it feels pretty good. I was talking to Ichiro though, and like he had 56 in one month, so I'm chilling, you know? There's always room for improvement. There's always things to do better. But it hasn't just been Julio that's been hot. Teoscar Hernandez is currently in his hottest stretch while wearing a Mariners uniform. Before tonight's game, he holds a 1.050 OPS during the month of August, fifth best in the American League during the month. JP Crawford is in the middle of his best offensive production year of his career. His 382 on base percentage leads all shortstops in Major League Baseball. His 795 OPS is sixth among all shortstops, and his OBP leads the Mariners. And since replacing Julio at the leadoff spot for the Mariners, he's come out swinging and been one of the best offensive pieces for the Mariners. His leadoff home run in tonight's game was his fifth leadoff home run this season, which is now tied for second most in a season in Mariners history, tied with Ichiro in 2002 and 2005. He only trails Julio who hit six leadoff home runs in 2022. And after tonight, JP Crawford is now fourth in all of baseball in the second half in on-base percentage, getting on base at a 440 clip. And he's also been a spark in the clubhouse. In an interview a couple weeks ago, JP Crawford said, like Jay Buter once said, forget the wild card, man. We're going for the division, but we still have a lot of games to go. We got to keep the way we are playing now, keep focused, and take it one day at a time. Cal Raleigh's 25 home runs leads all MLB catchers, and over his last 30 games, he's batting 250 with 11 home runs, 26 RBIs, and a 607 slug. Jose Caballero has been a menace on the base path, which definitely plays to the team's advantage. As for the newcomers in the Paul Seawald trade, honestly, I was a fan from the beginning. Two controllable guys in the major leagues plus a minor leaguer, and Dominic Canzone and Josh Rojas have been contributing after a bit of a warm-up period. And actually for Rojas, the move to Seattle might have been what he needed. In 59 games with the Diamondbacks, he was batting 228 with a 589 OPS and zero home runs. Whereas since coming to Seattle in just 18 games, he now has a 290 batting average, an 801 OPS, and has already hit three home runs. Nice buy low, Jerry. I think that, you know, some of the things mechanically that I was struggling with at the beginning of the season, um, 
you know, I kind of just flush those and, and try to just put the ball on play and, and get base hits because I couldn't find that, that swing to get the ball in the air to the pull side. And, um, you know, me and JD have really figured out some things to get me going and get the ball in the air uh, without having to cheat and, uh, you know, just reading pitches and, and swinging hard. And, um, you know, I finally have gotten those things locked in. And so now I feel like I can, I can elevate the ball to right without having, you know, to really try. And uh, it's, it's really worked for me. As for Dominic Canzone, he's a guy to really be excited about. He hit all throughout college, all throughout the minor leagues, and he's already played more games in the major leagues with the Mariners than he did with the Diamondbacks. He takes his walks, makes solid contact, and he's shown that clutch gene at times as well. Cade Marlowe has been a solid contributor. Mike Ford has had a career year so far. Utility man Dylan Moore has been playing great with an 861 OPS. And it was just announced a few days ago that Jared Kelnick is about to start his rehab assignment, so he'll be added to the mix at some point soon as well. Add to all of this the fact that the Rangers have regressed to the mean, their young guys were overperforming early and were due for a correction, and the Rangers have blown more saves this year than they've gotten saves. And prior to tonight, they were 1-9 in their last 10, the Mariners were 9-1 in their last 10. That's how you jump up to first place in the division. And the Astros aren't quite what they were last year, although still a worthy competitor. Moral of the story is if their offense can keep this up, no one can stop them. Their pitching is one of the best in baseball. Their offense is currently one of the best in baseball. And no one wants to face them right now. The Mariners' schedule does not get any easier moving forward, as after this Oakland series, they're heading out for a 10-game road trip against the Mets, the Reds, the Rays. They have a few games against the Dodgers, and then they finish out the year with seven games against the Rangers and three against the Astros, those last two series at home. Thank you for watching, and make sure to like and subscribe for more baseball and Mariners content throughout the season, and we'll see you next time.